Give me a child until he is seven, and I will show you the man. Why is this quote from Aristotle so profound, and what does it have to do with the power of words? Well, the reason for this quote is because between the ages of zero to seven, children are in what's called a theta brainwave state. And you can think of this as like a meditative or even hypnotic state. And this is so they can essentially absorb what's going on in the world around them so they can learn how to operate in this world. So they take on board the ideas and beliefs of those around them with the idea being that these beliefs and everything else are gonna help serve them as they continue to get older. So from zero to seven and sometimes even beyond, children are in this hypnotic kind of state absorbing so much that is going on around them. And what's being absorbed is what's going into the subconscious mind. Their beliefs are literally being molded in real time during these ages. But what these beliefs end up becoming rely heavily on what the authority figures in the children's lives are teaching them. That is to say, they absorb the information that comes from their teachers, their parents, and so on. But as you've probably seen, many children grow up developing beliefs that are far less than ideal. Beliefs that they are inadequate, a bad boy or girl, that we live in lack, that they are powerless, and a myriad of others. Why? Because they are simply picking up on what they are hearing and feeling from mainly the adults around them. Now, even though so much of the development of our subconscious mind happens during childhood in this way, we can still mold it and shift it later in life. Now, it becomes a little more difficult later in life simply because we're no longer in that theta brainwave state pretty much automatically. However, it is through the power of words, the power of suggestion, through the power of how you speak to yourself that is going to allow us to remove any of the negative programming we picked up in childhood and replace it with the beliefs and programs that will serve us. Because although we are not in a theta brainwave state for most of our adult lives or just kind of automatically, usually we're in a beta brainwave state, we can still put ourselves into this state or open ourselves up to suggestion in other ways. In fact, advertisers have actually been doing this for years. I've mentioned Edward Bernays before four on this channel who said, we are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. Now, who was Edward Bernays? Well, he was actually one of the pioneers for propaganda and manipulating public perception in order to get people to think a certain way about something or something else, regardless of whether it was true or not. For example, he worked on advertising campaigns for the tobacco industry for a very long time, convincing people that they are cool or that they're even good for you. He actually described the masses as irrational and subject to what's called herd instinct. And he outlined how skilled practitioners could use what's called crowd psychology and psychoanalysis to control them in desired ways through suggestion. And this is what TV shows, movies, companies that want to sell to you, politicians, and so many others in that kind of space still do to this day. They know how to put you into a hypnotic state and therefore make suggestions while you're in that state to alter your beliefs. Now, why am I telling you about this? Well, it's simple. We can use the same ideas that have essentially been used against you to brainwash you, that doesn't serve you, in order to actually brainwash yourself in ways that do serve you. So by reverse engineering them and brainwashing ourselves, so to speak, in order to better ourselves, we can reinforce ideas that help us and allow us to become who we want to become. Even if we had a deck that was stacked against us coming from childhood. So we can use these same techniques in the positive to shift our reality instead of being hooked into the realities that others have created for us. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can intentionally brainwash yourself so you are no longer brainwashed by those who don't really have your best interests at heart. And so much of this is dependent on the way you speak to yourself, on your inner dialogue and self-talk. So let's jump into it. A belief is simply a thought you keep thinking. And to make this very simple, a belief is a thought you have thought over and over again and have emotionalized to such a point that it becomes rooted in your subconscious as a belief. 
The feeling you have behind your beliefs or behind your thoughts are what really makes all the difference. You can think of it like having a certain charge or more energy behind certain thoughts than others. This is why certain things will trigger you and trigger an emotion, which we can consider just energy in motion, more than other things. Some thoughts come into your head throughout the day and have no impact, while other thoughts will come in and you will get very emotional about, or certain things in your external environment will cause you to think a certain way that gets you very emotional. This is because the feeling behind thoughts is what really propels it into becoming a belief. So this is why when you start thinking in a pattern type of way, a way that you may think most days, if you kind of wake yourself up and take notice, you'll notice that it always comes coupled with an emotion. You're rarely there in a neutral state just thinking about things unconsciously without an emotion attached. When Edward Bernays worked with the tobacco industry, he always looked to pair certain ideas with a strong feeling like freedom. This is what was used for tobacco in particular because People time and time again were exposed to this idea that cigarettes would make them feel freedom. They visualized this when they thought of cigarettes or they would see the advertising campaigns and this created a belief that this was the case. And so a certain thought was implanted in their mind, a feeling was associated to it and so it gave them this belief that when I smoke a cigarette or I do X, Y, and Z, I'm going to feel a sense of freedom. I am this, I am that. Now what's very interesting about our beliefs is they really do paint our world and create our reality and this is why. Because you have what's called a reticular activation system. Now a reticular activation system is essentially something that tries to reduce the workload of your conscious mind. Because in your subconscious mind you have all of the patterns, all of the beliefs, but if you were to try and consciously juggle all of that at the same time you would go crazy, you wouldn't be able to do it. And so your reticular activation uh, activation system is always on the prowl, always looking out to see what is deemed as important for you to put your attention on. And guess what? It is your beliefs that play a big part on what your reticular activation system believes is important or not. So for example, if you have a belief about money that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees and you never have enough of it, your reticular activation system will bring things into your attention throughout your day that reinforce that belief because it has been trained to see things that correspond with that because it's in the subconscious, it's deemed as important, so it will continue to look out for more and more evidence that that is the case. Think of your reticular activation system as like a bouncer at a club. And in the club is the things that get into your conscious attention. And so all of these things, like everything is coming towards the door for the bouncer and the bouncer, the RAS, the reticular activation system, can only let in things that are deemed important or who, on, or, or who are on the list of guests for the conscious mind. And so let's say you have a more negative outlook on life and a positive outlook starts to approach the club. The reticular activation system is gonna look at the clipboard and go, nope, you're not on the list. I'm not putting you through to the conscious mind. But then some negative beliefs start coming through. The reticular activation system looks at the list and goes, oh wait, you are on the list. You're deemed as important. Go right on through. And so again, a bill comes through and the belief, you know, it triggers an emotion and the belief comes through of I never have enough. I'm always don't have enough money or whatever else it is. Maybe something happens in a relationship and you have a belief that your relationships never work out or women are a certain way, men are a certain way. Bouncer goes, yep, that's in the subconscious. That's deemed as important. You're on the list you get to go through. And so this is what the reticular activation system is doing. If you've ever noticed when you, um, to give you a good example of also how this can work and how we can change this, if you've ever been excited about something, let's say it's been a new car. Let's say you wanted to get a new car and you were very excited about the prospect of getting that car and you believed you could get it like you weren't throwing in any doubt, but you were very excited about it. You may start realizing that you're seeing that car everywhere now and, and, in, and even in the color that you wanted to get it. Why is that? Because you kept thinking about that car you attached it to a feeling which was excitement and so it became this it became this belief and then the RAS saw okay this is something that's important this is in the subconscious now we want to continue showing them and making them aware when this car is about so you start seeing it more in the past that car was probably going past you almost as frequently but you just didn't notice it and so continually thinking about something while attaching that positive emotion to it, which in this case was excitement, helped create a certain belief that got the attention of the RAS to continue bringing that through, which allows for a conviction or you know, a much more powerful, even more deep-rooted belief to come through, like a worldview, we'll say.
Essentially, your reticular activation system is continually looking for evidence to confirm your current worldview. Now, realize I didn't say continually looking for evidence about what is actually true. It is continually looking for evidence about what is true towards your current worldview. Not truth with a capital T, but what is true based on your current worldview determined by your beliefs and your subconscious. That means if your worldview is one that sees and paints everything negatively, it will find the evidence to essentially confirm that truth. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're someone who is has many positive beliefs and thinks about things in a very positive way, it's going to do the same for that as well. It's going to continually bring you the evidence of why you should be grateful or why you're abundant or why you're healthy in that same way. And so it can either be our best friend in that way or our worst enemy if it's more on the negative side, but we can also, again, deliberately start uprooting some of these beliefs that are causing this negative sway and start planting the beliefs that are gonna get you to be more positive, which will end up bringing more of what you want into your life. Now this obviously will act as a self-perpetuating feedback loop if we don't do something about it. You'll have a belief that life is a struggle, for example, because you were exposed to this idea repeatedly paired with a strong emotion. It was turned into a belief that your RAS then let in more of because it was deemed important, which provides more evidence of it being true. And now you have even more conviction that this is the case because your RAS reticular activating system is literally not allowing the evidence to the contrary into your attention. Remember, it's not letting it into the club, it's not letting it into the facility where your conscious mind is. So now we are going to go over how to break this cycle and create new patterns to actually serve you in the next part. But it is crucial you understand how beliefs are formed and what's really going on in the background, really reverse engineering this so that we then know how to build the beliefs we actually want. Keep in mind that we never rise above the opinion of ourselves, which is why it is so crucial to restructure our beliefs and give ourselves beliefs and create beliefs for ourselves that are empowering, empowering instead of disempowering. Again, the RAS is not here to screw us over. It's actually an amazing tool. It is just working with what we give it. So how do we go about changing our beliefs? Well, there are a few things that we can do and I want you to keep in mind. The first thing is to give more importance or more attention to the vision than the physical circumstances because your current physical circumstances are probably going to continually give you evidence to reinforce the negative beliefs that you currently have. The RAS, the reticular activating system, will then provide more evidence that it is the case and again, we get into that perpetuating loop. And so you want to give more loyalty to the vision than the physical circumstances. And I believe that quote comes from Neville Goddard, which is why he always talks about assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Because if you're thinking about certain things that help you assume the feeling of what it is you actually want in your life versus what is already in the physical circumstances, well then the RAS again is going, you're gonna create a belief around that. The RAS, RAS will play off of that belief and then start providing you evidence that that belief is true. And as you're doing this, giving more loyalty to the vision than the physical circumstances, it will cause you to think more about the vision in which you are excited about. This will create an elevated feeling about it and this will start creating the belief about it, which will again start to change your reticular activation system. Now, what is crucial as you are making this shift is to collect evidence that this is occurring. Again, your RAS is gonna start giving you evidence that this new belief is true. Right, And one of the most important things to do is to start becoming aware and vigilant of that evidence and to start jotting it down. And we'll go over this a little bit more as we go over tools, but it is crucial that again, we start taking it from just a thought that's coming in and we almost physicalize it by writing it down. Now, when it comes down to this, one thing I want you to recognize is that we get what we think about most of the time and we also get what we feel about most of the time. Now, if we have certain beliefs that are more negatively primed, then if you just go unconscious all of the time, you're gonna be essentially thinking about the things you don't want or negative things most of the time. But notice that I mentioned if you go unconscious all of the time, because that's when your subconscious is basically running you on autopilot. And so what we can do is just become more conscious and start cutting ourselves off, really interrupting the pattern when certain negative 
things are occurring. And one thing you want to keep in mind is what are you voting for? Essentially, the more thoughts you have and you entertain, as in you let it go through its whole process, that are negative, that is a vote towards that belief, which will reinforce the belief. But the more times you think positively or cut off that pattern, interrupt that one, and create a new one that's more positively swayed, the more you're voting for that side of things. And ultimately, at the end of the day, which have you given more votes to, which is essentially what have you given more energy to? Essentially. If you vote more for the beliefs you wish to form on any given day, you are starting to create more of that. You are activating your reticular activating system to give you more evidence of that, which is giving you more convictions around whatever that belief is. However, if you allow the negative to just kind of go through its pattern as usual, you are voting for that. And a lot of people are giving 99% of their votes each and every single day to the negative and then wondering why their life is incredibly negative in everything that's going on. Right? But if you start speaking to yourself more from the positive, you start reaffirming that, you start feeling excited towards those things, you start really creating those beliefs and cutting off the other beliefs so they can't fire and wire more and create more neural connections, you'll notice that things begin to change. And so which are you voting for more often than not? Now an important way to do this is to affirm what it is you actually want to believe and who it is you want to become. You need to know what you're looking to move into here. Another reason a lot of people default into the negative beliefs and start creating these identities around themselves that are more negative, like I am not good with money, or I am, you know, whatever else it is, whatever it is else it is for you. I'm not good in relationships. I'm just someone, I'm not special, I guess. I'm not lucky. I'm not, you know, these people have it. I don't have whatever that it is. The reason that is, is because a lot of people have no aim. And so they're basically being taken for a ride, just being given beliefs through programming and through things we mentioned earlier. And ultimately those things are almost always on the negative side of things. If you allow people to choose for you, you know, most people are swayed negatively on the planet at this moment. Therefore, you're going to do that too if you don't choose for yourself. And so you need to determine what is it I even want to believe? What beliefs do I want to install into my subconscious? Who is it I need to become? You really need to map that out so that we can then start removing the beliefs that no longer align to that and also installing the beliefs that are going to allow you to be this whatever it is that you've chosen most of the time. And again, once you have created that vision for yourself, you are going to ignore the sense data that doesn't support that vision. You are going to give more loyalty to the vision than the physical circumstances. And we're going to go over again how to do this, but ultimately ignore everything else. Remember, where focus goes, energy flows. Things you give your attention to grow in your life. And so the more you entertain thoughts that don't serve you, the more you're going to get of those. The more you look at things in your physical to reinforce negative beliefs, the stronger those beliefs will become. And then through your reticular activating system, the more of that stuff's going to come into your physical. And so do your best to completely ignore anything that does not serve you in your mission to become who you want to become or to believe what it is you want to believe. Again, if you trip up here and there, that's absolutely fine. Just try and recover. But that's ultimately the goal here. You want to get so intentional with only accepting in whatever it is that reinforces who you want to become or what you want to believe. Remember, you are in infinite action. You are always sending out a signal. You are always recreating yourself in every moment. So how are you speaking to yourself? What are the thoughts you are having? These are going to go a long way to determining who you are going to be. So let's go over a few tools that are going to actually help you to do this. And the first one is the simplest one and one you want to be using throughout the day. And this is simply just waking up. You have to remember that when you're in an unconscious state, your subconscious is moving in autopilot. And if you have more negative programming in your subconscious, which you probably absolutely do if you haven't done this work at a deep level yet, then you want to interrupt the patterns when they come through. Because when you have certain thoughts in an unconscious way that 
kind of activates that negative feeling, that activates that belief, what you're doing is you're creating neural pathways or strengthening neural pathways that are there. However, if we can neutralize the energy, those neural pathways do not continue to get stronger and actually begin to get weaker. In fact, a really good way to think about this is imagine your neural pathways are kind of like tracks in the snow. So let's say it's consistently snowing all of the time. Your neural pathways are essentially pathways you've walked down continuously because you keep walking down them. And so there's very deep pathways through this snow for whatever that is. But if you just stop walking down that pathway, what's going to happen? That's right, the snow is going to cover the pathway and it's going to be something that's no longer easy to access. Now for a lot of people, that's how it is for the positive stuff, but again, the more we focus on that, the more we dig that pathway out and the more we go down it, the more we create that groove, which then becomes easier and easier to access. But in order to really interrupt us continuing to create that strong neural pathway towards these negative beliefs, we need to interrupt the pattern. And so what you wanna do is wake up. As soon as you notice yourself thinking negatively and you become aware, you need to wake up, get into the moment and bring the conscious mind into play. Look at this thought, try and detach yourself from it and ask yourself, is this how I want to think? Do I really want to follow through with this thought? Is this who I am? Is this what I want to reinforce? It can really help at this moment to breathe deeply so you get more anchored into the present moment. And once you're calm and once you've more neutralized the energy, choose a better feeling thought. So for example, it might be you're having some financial thoughts come up that aren't too favorable, aren't ones you want to have, and it's causing you to feel lack. It's causing you to feel maybe some other lower emotions. You, you interrupt the pattern, you think, okay, wait a second, breathe into the moment. How do I really want to think about this? And then choose the best feeling thought that you can believe. Again, you don't have to go to, I'm rich and I'm an abundant person, and I'm magical and all that, if that doesn't, if that's something that doesn't resonate to you, pick a thought that you can get excited about. Pick a thought that is the best next feeling thought, and you can then improve it from there. But cut off that feeling, cut off that thought, and replace it with something that's more empowering. And as you continue to do this throughout the day, you're doing two things. One, you are cutting off yourself from walking down the path in the snow that is the neural connection towards that negative belief, meaning that more snow is going to fall on top of it, and if you keep not, walk, if you keep not walking down that path, that neural pathway begins to die. So that's one thing you're doing, you're starving it of energy. The second thing you're doing is you're now giving that energy to something that's more beneficial to you, creating a new belief that your RAS will then create more evidence or reveal more evidence for the more you keep going down it. And this is why it's so crucial to wake up during the day as you're going through it, notice how you're speaking to yourself and change it to something that actually serves more of that person you want to become. And again, if you stumble here and there, completely fine, but just do the best you can with this and it will get easier over time. One other thing you can do that plays into this is when you notice that pattern coming up and you interrupt it, to immediately start thinking of the vision you have for yourself. Now, if you do not have a vision for yourself, that might be why a lot of this is very difficult. And so at the end of this video, I will link you to another video where I go over one of the best ways to discover what your dream is, how to write it out so you can tune into it very correctly. And this is like some high level stuff that's incredibly beneficial. So if this is something you struggle with, you will have that resource absolutely for free down, um, at the end of this video, uh, at the very end. So you will have that. But when you do have that, or if you already have that, when you notice these things coming up, tune into your vision, the vision of who you want to become, this thing you want to move into. Remember, give more loyalty to the vision than the physical circumstances. Give more loyalty to the vision than whatever the current thought patterns are that are not serving you. And so when that pattern comes up, if you interrupt it and you don't give your energy towards it, and instead Instead, give your energy towards the vision, the excitement you feel when you think of that vision. You're now thinking about it all the time, which we get what we think about most of the time and feel about most of the time. When you do this, again, that snow is now falling. Again, again, it's just an analogy, it's just a metaphor here, but that snow is falling on that neural pathway that no longer serves you and is now being given to the neural pathway you're creating around this vision. Next, and this is another crucial one, you can brainwash yourself with positive media, very positive media. And what I mean by this is videos, books, uh, coaching programs, um, you know, courses, things of this nature that you can tune into and almost let do the work for you. That essentially, if you just give it your attention and you just you know, do your best to learn from it, 
What are you going to be thinking about if say you're going through a coaching program and they're showing you like the best tools and things that are high on the consciousness scale energetically? Well, now suddenly you're being washed over with that energy. You're now thinking of these things. These are now thoughts that are being recreated in you in the same way brainwashing has been used through TV programming that you've watched and paid attention to or through advertising or through, you know, even schooling and things of this nature, all things you had to pay attention to, to be brainwashed about, you can reverse brainwash yourself, so to speak, by exposing yourself more often than you do other things or more often than not to things that would brainwash you positively, give you positive beliefs, teach you these things. So videos like this, for example, are good. Uh, programs and coaching is even better because it's deeper. Books, you know, finding the right books are also great. You know, a lot of my day is spent in listening to mentors I have going through their coaching programs or one-on-one -on -one coaching I get, reading books that have all been vetted by people who know what they're talking about. So I'm getting some of the best books to be able to read, listening to audios. And I do this throughout the day, doing practice practices like meditations and all the other stuff, tuning into my own work, which puts me in a high energy. And because of this, so much of the day, I'm tuning into these things, which is again, creating that exciting feeling, which is creating beliefs around these things, which is getting my reticular activation system to allow more of that through, which is providing me evidence of the truth of it, which is providing convictions more around these things. Now, if you are interested in the coaching side of it, which goes way deeper, we do have a very, very deep world-class coaching program known as EMF that you can learn more about down below. We have a free case study you can watch that tells you more about it, how it works, the results people have gotten. And it's in my eyes, of course, one of the best ways to go about this because you're just going to be able to tune into it and get so much from it. So if that is something you want to do, you can go explore that. Remember, you are in infinite action. And so when you're watching TV, when you're watching junk media, when you're doing all of these things, when you're even leaving yourself to your own thoughts that are kind of really going for a negative ride, you're influencing yourself in a way that brings more of what you don't want into your life. But on the flip side of infinite action, when you learn and create the habits to really tune into positive um, information and tr you know actually doing the work, doing the work and trusting the process, tuning into the programs that actually serve you, the books, the audios, and then that's causing you to think that way more often than not. So when you're with your thoughts, you're actually thinking thinking more in that way, when you do that, the benefits are astounding. When you've created the tracks in the snow, the neural connections that actually serve you in who you want to be. This is when you actually start becoming who you need to become. Now, again, if you don't have a dream or a vision, I would go watch this video next. And this is a process that not many people know about. It has all the puzzle pieces in a row and everything you need to start bringing your dreams, you know, what you actually want into your life. It is an insanely valuable video. So please take advantage of it over here.